and welcome here to this special edition of Husker Chat Live. Sean Callahan with Husker Online, and it's been a busy weekend, uh, not only with the NFL draft, as um, we've had three Husker players drafted, several other guys uh, signing on um, with free agent contracts, but it was a big weekend uh, for the Huskers in landing TCU's O'Shawn Mathis, and uh, we're going to be joined here uh, for the next 30 minutes or so on Husker Chat Live. Uh, this is the first interview O'Shawn has given um, since he uh, went into the transfer portal all the way back in January. It's been a long process. You made the announcement. You visited Nebraska. You visited TCU. Um, let's get into it right away. Uh, why Nebraska? Why did you uh, pick the Huskers uh, when it was all said and done? Yeah, coming to uh, Lincoln, it was uh, it was more of a business trip. And uh, coming out, it was kind of a little bit of uncertainty of knowing what is actually out there besides corn. But uh, it kind of just set the high bar for me whenever I came up. And I was more than welcome. Just the, the genuinity is, is of the people who are surrounding that area were, were showing so much love to me and my family. And, of, co of course, the uh, the recruiting staff also showed their love and compassion or whatnot. And having all that said, it was just it was just a great time, and I enjoyed it. And uh, I remember a good time. Uh, we was walking through the academic area, and they were setting up the balloons. And so many uh, – it was like senior citizens all over the place or whatnot, just helping out. And just seeing that also just brought, a, brought it to light that how – dedicated the people around Lincoln are and uh walking through there they cheered me on and stuff like that and it made me feel really good inside and if you're just joining us here on Husker chat live and have not been a part of our previous uh, interviews one of the fun things about this we allow Husker fans to ask questions interact and you'll, you'll get that chance here tonight with Oshan um, and Husker chat live reminder give us a like give us a thumbs up it helps the content, uh, content. It helps get this out to more Husker fans. Uh, we've already got over 162 right now uh, watching um, the, the live stream. Not quite as many as you had yesterday. I, I think you had about <laughs> 6,000. Um, I mean, that had to catch yeah. you by surprise just how much attention. I mean, I've been around a lot of announcements. I mean, that, that was a big announcement. And, you know, we're talking about the transfer portal and uh, just how suspenseful you made that because – I was with Texas guys, talked to Texas guys and Nebraska people. I mean, really, nobody knew. I mean, did how, how did you keep it so close to the vest over all these weeks? Um, I say for the most part, just uh, the lingering aspect of me waiting till the end to uh, announce all that stuff and the hype built up and I could actually see it build up over time and just seeing it all just, uh, just be laid out in front of me. Uh, you heard me a few times just vo uh, voice out that it was like going up in numbers. And I was like, wow, wow, this is just a lot of tension, you know, and it felt really good. What uh, I mean, you visited Nebraska um, for the spring game and they, they had been recruiting you for several months um, b before that. What was I mean, go back to what, what was the first contact from Nebraska and the coaches? I mean, how, how did they kind of first reach out to you and. What were your initial thoughts? Because you had everybody. I mean, you the the athletic.com ranked you as the number one transfer portal prospect in the country as of yesterday. So obviously you had a lot of options. Um, right. what was it about Nebraska that it at least got on your radar when you could have gone really probably to 50 different schools? Um, one thing I was looking and seeking for was uh, having a, a familiar face ar around the program and Coach Applewhite, who is the running back coach there in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, he he came from TCU and he coached Zach Evans, who was at Ole Miss, and me and him had a good connection. And we always would used to race towards him for the kickoff and uh, the punts to catch punts or whatnot, mm -hmm. and at practice. And just having that similar connection in another program, I say for the most part, would help me a lot. Just getting in and fitting in the shoes or whatnot, and just coming in and feeling really good about being there. So I say for the most part that. Um, Coach Applewhite had a big impact on me going to that school. He recruited me hard, and and uh, I trust that man with my heart. So he was the first real contact because of the the, the natural connection, right? Right. And then from, I mean, what did you know about Nebraska? Did you have any knowledge? I mean, they were once in the Big Twelve, but that was a long time ago. Um, right. Over, so you know, obviously, you didn't grow up really watching Nebraska because they weren't playing in your part of the country. 
Uh, I mean, what what did you know about Nebraska before they reached out to you? Um, for the most part, I I know there was a guy that went to TCU and went out that way. Um, I forgot his name. Uh, he plays receiver, and we had JD, JD Spielman. JD Spielman came here and he did his little uh, journey here and whatnot, and uh, he he finished strong and. And just having that similar connection and just knowing uh, that Nebraska, I've always used to watch Nebraska's uh, old games or whatnot. And um, I say a, a sudden thought was there about Nebraska. Um, like I said, Coach Applewhite kind of brought it to light that it was a big deal. Um, and I kind of stuck with it and just had my trust in the program and him. And he guys finally came out on top. As the Huskers, you know, what what was that like? I mean, you're you're right down the road from Austin. You grew up there in that area. I mean, did, did, how stressful was was that? I mean, you were in Austin a week ago, right? Your your former college coach Gary Patterson is a part of the staff at Texas, right? So they probably felt like they had a lot of things going. Um, were they trying to get you to commit that weekend? Um, I mean, what was it like being in Austin and just maybe the pressure, obviously just, you know, having the home state team like Texas on you? Like I said, it was a business decision and uh, going into Austin, I wasn't looking forward to just going somewhere. I was supremely just familiar with. Um, I, I, t I seek this opportunity uh, to weigh my options all the way to the end. So I will have no regrets at the end of the day. And, um, I decided I decided to create my own footsteps in this aspect of things, and I know I love Coach B to death. And uh, just coming out of there, I knew I seen the anticipation of those guys wanting me there. Went there, seen a lot of day one supporters come into the uh, spring game, and almost changed my mind. But I was like, I, I can't just fall back onto the support system. Nebraska GBR, you guys have the the most loyal fan base ever and i felt like if anything it kind of was the equivalent of just the day one supporters and uh i love everything about the nebraska supporters the support system itself so what was that spring game like i mean i, I saw you there you had several of your family members and friends with right. you and that had to be important because if you're going to do this for a year or two and you've never been up here just having the closest people in your lives in Lincoln for kind of a simulated game day. How big did that kind of play to let them experience that with you? Um, it was first off, it was the first time I could actually show them what a plane ride would look like. And that, wow. and the aspect of things, I just, I just love the fact that they were given that opportunity that along me giving the opportunity to give them the opportunity and, and uh, just seeing the, uh, the, the just the looks on their faces, seeing this, uh, uh, seeing this ground from above, and and once we landed, and we never really left out of the state of Texas as a family, and uh, finally just having the opportunity to give them that experience was something that was uh, dear to me, and it was just a cherry on top. Whenever the support system was there at at Nebraska, and my mom loved it, everyone loved it. I've had. Uh, who was it? My brother, my best friend, my mom, and my sister. They all enjoyed it. Had nothing but good things to say about it, and they treated us like v uh, the VIP guests of the uh, whole thing. And it, it was really good to have all the eyes on me and my family. And they enjoyed the attention. And uh, coming back to Austin, they 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 kind of just I mean, coming back to the clean area, the Texas area. They they were um, they had nothing but great things to say, and they just reminisced on it for the uh, next few weeks going on to the Texas visit. Well, so. the red carpet Nebraska laid out for you. I mean, I've been around Nebraska recruiting a long time, covering right. it. And, I mean, you had I, mean, I saw Rich Glover talking to you. I saw Jason right. Peter, the athletic director, Trev Albert, spent a lot of time with you. Obviously, the coaching staff, the players. Um, I mean, just when you got there, I mean, how important did they make you feel? How big of a priority do they let you know that you were for Nebraska? Yeah, man, they were uh, giving me all the the entries of just having one on one conversations with the uh, with the big names that came out of Lincoln and just having that type of support. You know, I kind of kept my composure, whatnot, seeing Jason Peters and the stuff like that was just a great experience. And 
just having that one-on-one conversation with them, just them giving me cues and, and just ask, inspiring me to go further and, uh, and just having insight on coming to Nebraska itself. They weren't too pushy. They weren't doing the recruiting, just putting in my face, just like the normal recruitment of a normal high schooler coming out of high school. It was more of a business approach and uh, they treated everything like a profession. And that's what I like the most about it. Talking about, we got a lot of questions about just scheme and how you're going to play for Nebraska. Um, go into that. I mean, how have they talked to you about how they envision you playing on this defense here in 2022? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, I know Coach Frost had talked to me, and I talked with the uh, the defensive coordinator, and we all just talked about it and sat down with my whole, entire family, and they pointed out the things that would have me doing on first and second down, which is – of course, just running plays most likely. And then whenever it's third down, it's on and popping. So they're just going to have me on the one-on-one with the weakest link on, of the offense and have me just wreak havoc on the quarterback. And that's one thing that I wanted to do for the longest uh, is showcase my ability of coming off the edge and playing like an animal. Got a question on the chat. Um, wants to know who you compare your game to. Is there a guy that you kind of like mimic – a player that you like to watch, um, you know, what type of pass rusher are you? Um, I'm, I don't have a, a specific guy. I, I say for the most part that I want to be like everyone. <laughs> I, I try to pick up uh, traits from every um, defensive end in the league. Right now I watch film on Khalil Mack, uh, Miles Garrett, uh, Max Crosby, all the big name guys, and and just picking up traits, ghost moves, and stuff like that, something I can improve on and uh, picking up on everything that those guys have shown on film is one thing I'm trying to inherit on and uh, become one of the best out there. If you're just joining us, it's Husker Chat Live. We're joined by TCU Transfer Portal uh, commitment, Oshan Mathis. Um, and a reminder, if you're, you're on here, we'll take your questions and comments here. We'll f- feature them here on the side. Uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Give us a like. It helps get it out to more Husker fans, more people out there, give us a thumbs up. Oshan gave us his thumbs up. Now let's talk about Lincoln. When when will you get to Nebraska? Um, what's the timeline right now for Oshan Mathis? Um, I just looked at some uh, – I just talked with the coaches and whatnot just before we got on, actually. And uh, I believe they start the workouts on the 22nd of May, and I believe I'll be coming in on the 20th or around the 21st whenever uh, I can get in and get settled in in my living situation and get started with the workouts is around that time. I think the governor of Nebraska is going to give you a special escort to get you from <laughs> Texas to Nebraska on May 20th. Really? Is, is that, a, is that some rumor or something? No, I'm just, I'm just teasing. <laughs> the, uh, there's a question though, in the chat of, about uh, whose fans are better, Texas or Nebraska. Describe the difference between Longhorn and Husker fans. And you guys, you guys, uh, Husker fans all day. Like the support system I've seen in the comment section on my, most of my uh, posts, the posts I did give out, um, I've seen nothing but good things come from uh, Nebraska fans. And I was paying attention to every single comment. And uh, I will just give a shout out to all you guys. To be honest, that was just a great time. Just seeing all that, all the support was great. We got a question from Brian, uh, Brian Kenkel. What are a couple of things that really surprised you about Nebraska? Um, a couple of things I've seen was uh, open doors and and um, the huddle, the huddle uh, headquarters. Everything seemed like it started in Nebraska. And that's one thing that I could uh, personify on. And I say for the most part that it kind of brought to light that Nebraska is not just corn. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> It's not just that. It's a lot of. It's the foundation for a lot of things, and including uh, I've heard uh, the weight training and all that stuff starting in Nebraska. Everything kind of just originated from there, and that one thing just stuck with me after leaving, and just seeing how much uh, productivity can actually come out of there. And and um, I just hope to be one of those productivity guys, just coming out of the football program, along with the other guys on the uh, football team. A lot of good guys on the team for sure too. Jared Pick wants to know, Oshan, what are uh, what are your goals? Uh, what type of goals do you have right now? My goals is to come in and execute and 
uh, bond with the guys for sure. I've seen a lot of uh, leadership on that team, and it's not too much of a rebuild. And it's one thing to get in there and get to know the guys and bond with those guys so we can go out there and fight together. And and uh, another goal is to come out with double-digit sacks at the end of the season and uh, being able to showcase my talent and off the edge and actually not have to read things so much and just go off the edge and just play like an animal, like I said, and play with just fanatical effort. We got a couple questions um, from one from Mark about Big Ten competition and, and another one from Hot Dog here as well. Um, just playing in the Big Ten, I mean, you watch the draft. You, right. you, you kind of saw, I mean, obviously the SEC and the Big Ten, those two leagues um, are superior, and the Big Ten's a great lineman league. How much did that kind of impact your decision when you kind of looked at things? Well, that's the one reason why I kind of saved my commitment to be at, at the end of uh, – around the time the NFL draft happens. And just to see and uh, play – play uh, a good part in trying to watch what conferences actually uh, put guys into the league and put them high in a draft and big 10 sec acc big 12 kind of lacked behind and that's one thing i could say that had a huge part in my decision as well was the what was just the nfl draft picks for the big 10 yeah um the big 10 had a good amount of guys come out as at the dn position and I, I, I seek for that to be a good part in my decision. And uh, as one thing, as uh, just looking forward to that draft next year, I want to be in a good position. And big, the Big Ten has a lot of competition, so showcase my talent against big linemen. And uh, and just having that type of film will help me out further along down in my career. What are you? What's your height and weight right now? My height is six five. My weight is two fifty eight. So. I mean, Nebraska, are they going to be more kind of a, of an even front? Is that how you envision it, where you're going to be kind of on one edge and Garrett Nelson could be on the other edge? I mean, how do you kind of envision the look of this scheme with you in there now? Well, um, so much of, of, of the competition side of things, I would like to work along with those guys and rotate with those guys and have enough time to come off the field as well and just come back in and be fresh and have a fresh start on each down. And um, if anything, just rotate with those guys and whatever scheme they might have. And uh, with game plan is one thing to uh, know about when trying to come in these games and just knowing that we can actually probably go about rotating a lot and playing. So far, I don't know too much about how the rotating is going to be, but I know for a good part that um, it's a good deal. And I had a, a ton of trust. And uh, I know it's a down, they're down in depth. And I would like to work with those two guys for sure. Got a, got a question here from uh, Brian. Um, have you talked to Casey Thompson much? Obviously, he was at Texas, um, you know, Big 12 guy that you're familiar with. Um, right. Talk about your relationship with Casey Thompson. And I had heard maybe that he had a conversation with you leading up to your decision as well. Yeah, yeah. Casey Thompson and I stayed on for like a three-hour call. Um, he, he gave the rundown. He he kind of made me feel good about the decision I was looking forward to. Um, if anything, if I were looking the other way towards Texas, he would have uh, not had an uh, impact on my decision. But that along him just being trustworthy enough to give me the good information and and uh, not hiding any shadiness or whatnot, uh, it had a great impact on my decision for sure. And uh, he did a great job with just laying out everything his experience going from his experience being up there the transition and uh, uh the weightlifting program the conditioning part of things and him saying that we were basically in a similar position looking he was looking at OU and Nebraska he chose Nebraska he, he uh took a leap of faith and that's one thing I could say I had the time to not take the leap of faith but look at the in and outs of things and having the opportunity to hear from him for a three-hour call was just it was it was a great deal for me on my decision and uh he did a great job he didn't have anything i would say for the most part i want to put this out there casey thompson didn't have anything bad to say about texas or anything he just was dead on just telling me the in and outs of every situation and he did a great job on that i i i could say that for the most part and I understand you guys are going to live in the in the same building now. I'd be joked yeah. off air. It's going to be the Big Twelve dorm, yeah, in Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 
hopefully I could be down the hall from him to see him uh, time to time coming in and out of there, going to practice or whatnot, ride out to go get some drinks or whatnot. It'll be a good deal. Um, got a question here from um, Go Big Redcast. Mm-hmm. Were you familiar with Omar Manning when he was at TCU, or was that before your time, the wide receiver at Nebraska? Uh, uh, Omar Manning, I've heard uh, – I've heard a lot from – yeah, actually. He, was he – is he there now? Yeah, he's at Nebraska yeah. now. He's at a, he went to TCU, JUCO. He was an Army All-American back in yeah. the day, and then yeah. he's been at Nebraska now. This will be his third season at Nebraska. That was before my time. I didn't get to see him uh, when I was there. But just seeing him, I went over there, and whenever I was trying out for my uh, little photo shoot or whatnot, I seen his locker. I changed by his locker or whatnot, and I seen him, and – I, see, I, I noticed a familiar face that he was at TCU and and he was a JUCO product. And uh, yeah, I was very familiar with him at that aspect of things. Got a question from Zoom. When did you let Nebraska's coaches know when you were going to commit and what was their reaction when they got the news? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, to be honest, I didn't let them know anything. I wanted to be a surprise as, uh, as, as, as if it was to the, uh, the masses and, and uh, I'll say for the most part, I said I told uh, Coach Applewhite a few hours before my decision that I was going to be committing to Nebraska. But I wanted to keep it away from the media for a little bit, just let it build up and just let the hype build up as well. And uh, it, it turns out it was it was really great from you guys and the masses as well. Everybody was scared to make a prediction. I can tell you that I think. <laughs> Like, like usually the media put out their pred- forecast, crystal balls, future camp, right. whatever you call them. No, nobody wanted to like go all in on one because you, you kept us in the dark. And this is the first interview you've done. I mean, how yeah. hard has it been? Because you're, I mean, how give me an idea. Like, what is the typical text, phone call, log per day you were getting over this process? Oh yeah, it was it was it was hectic, man. It was. Uh... From left and right, it was uh, phone calls all day, every day, all day, every day. It was, I can go on and on, but um, it got to a point. I put my phone on silent and made my top five, and it was just secure with that. I was <laughs> top five as if you know, I just committed to a school. Um, I just sat back and relaxed for a good point of time and just focused on my education. And uh, soon I'll be getting my degree soon next week. Now, I mean, this Saturday. And uh, I just sat back and just let it build up. And I just look in and out of uh, Twitter every now and then, see all the the talk going on. And um, it was good to just sit back and just not have an invoice on it. <laughs> what was like the strangest interaction you had? And if if it helps you tell, share the news, don't even tell the team or the player or a coach, whoever it was, but give me like one strange interaction you got over the, this process. Oh, uh, I say for the most part, I, I believe it was, uh, uh, it was, it was, it was many times that right before, I don't think it was the past week, right after the Texas visit, people were coming in, hitting me up, telling me, um, Hey man, we need a DN this and that from Georgia. Um, I believe it's, uh, I don't want to name every school, but it was kind of at the end of my decision. I was like, uh, I was just, I'm, almost about to commit to a school i'm not going to jump board and piss everyone off i'm not going to do that <laughs> if anything <laughs> I'm doing it for myself and uh i think that was the most weirdest interaction i had was just towards the end everyone was coming in trying to peek in that last resort type thing and try to get me on board but i wasn't going to have it <laughs> when you look at i uh, got a question here from um moonbot seven what is the biggest difference you're expecting from the big 10 versus the big 12 Biggest difference I'm having from the uh, Big Ten, I can say, is the competition level. Um, i seen coming in, i seen a lot of big tackles coming out, big linemen in general coming out of the Big Ten. And just having that uh, that type of quo coming into the Big Ten, I would, uh, would like to have that type of film going against those type of guys because those are the type of guys who go to the league most importantly. And uh, – just having that type of experience level with those guys and just going head to head every down with those guys. And I think that would be a huge part on me um, in my film going on to the next level. This is a good question. What number do you want to wear at Nebraska? I was just talking about that with my family. Um, 
I was looking at what single digits they had. Uh, I would like a single digit, but also the superstition rising with the number 32 is also there. Um, I'm not too sure yet. Y'all would just have to wait and see for sure. You got to get an inventory on what's available, right? Right, exactly. Exactly. All right. Are you excited to go to Ireland? Um, people asking about Ireland. Is yes, that- I've never been out the state of Texas for a long time, but that along the country. So just going out of the states and going across the ocean is going to be a hectic experience. That along, I'm scared of the ocean as much as my name is sounds like the ocean, uh, the word ocean. I'm um, I'm looking forward to it. Most importantly, just seeing the uh, the sightseeing of it. I've always wished to go out of uh, go to and get out of the country and just go and travel the world. And Ireland is one of those places that was actually on my bucket list. You gonna get your mom out there too? Oh yeah, yeah. She's she's gonna definitely go out there. I want her to see that type of stuff too. I got a random question uh, from John. What's your preferred cut of steak? Oh okay, I say. Um, I like the ribeye. Uh, anything that's a ribeye, uh, and I keep it medium rare. And that kind of thing kind of impressed the coaches a little bit when we were eating out steak and, on my official visit. And those guys were, like, looking at me crazy, like, oh, wow, he's he's liking the medium rare. So, uh, so it was, it was, that's my that's my preference. Yeah, that that's a good Nebraska steak right there. Where, where'd they take it? you remember? Uh, I believe it's right down there uh, – the, by the train station, it was right around that area. It was on the oh, corner. J- JTK, maybe? I, I believe it was JTK. And it was, oh, man, I can't remember the name. I'm definitely going back. <laughs> but, yeah, that's right by the train station down there. So, all right, let's see here. Moving through the questions. Um, do you consider yourself a country or a city guy? I'm definitely a country guy. I was once a city guy. Um we moved out to the country of Maynard and I stayed out there and that's what I thrived the most. So I believe that going back into the country is more of a getting away thing and just enjoying the aspect of the quiet and uh, getting away from the city. And as, as you can hear now, you could probably hear some cars driving by here and it's kind of annoying. <laughs> it's kind of annoying through that. So got a question here from Brian um, wants to know, did you get a chance to talk to the athletic director, Trev Alberts, much? Uh, what impressed you about getting the opportunity to, to meet with him? Uh, Trev Alberts. I don't think I got the opportunity to meet him yet. I'm looking. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think there was a picture of you guys at the midfield. I didn't meet him. in. The, oh, yeah, yeah. It was great, actually. Uh, I met him in the middle of the field. It was a great experience just standing on the end. And he came out and, and talked to me. Uh, he We pointed out the uh, – the leaderboards up there and the names that are forever going to be on that stadium. And he pointed out and he told me that he wants me to beat his sack score. And, and that's one thing I said to myself, I was, I was like, Oh, I can't believe he's actually telling me to actually do this. Uh, but he's actually a genuine guy. And he, he laid it out for me. And he told me man to man that um, I'm going to change the game and I'm going to come in there and be in true impact on the team. And he wants me to beat his, his sack record. And, and that's one thing that kind of sat with me and uh, on the plane ride back. And I, I, I kid you not, I talked to my mom in and out just on that experience. Just having that one-on-one conversation with him was pretty good. It was great. Okay, got a question here from Tyler. Just your thoughts on Coach Frost. I mean, how much have you got to talk to your next head coach? And and uh, what do you think of Coach Frost? Coach Frost is very reserved. He's a very reserved guy. And I say for the most part that I'm, I'm – I'm, I can relate to him in that aspect of things. He's, he's, uh, we sat down with him and I could tell he's very family oriented. He talked about his kids coming in and, uh, breaking his glasses on accident. It was just a funny experience. Just hear from him, his, uh, his home style of living is just, and just him just kind of comparing and contrasting my family orientation with his, um, I could definitely feel a connection with coach Frost and I'm definitely looking forward to, uh, being one of his players and, 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 and just playing for him. You think Nebraska is going to get a few more uh, pieces from the portal on, on the defensive front? I know they're close on some guys. I mean, do you have any intel uh, you can share? I know Devin Drew is close, but he hasn't made a public announcement yet. Uh, yeah. Could you get a few more guys to join you at this point? Yeah, yeah. I've I definitely seen some guys on the D-line uh, uh, aspect of things, and 
I see a guy coming from Texas Tech. I would definitely want to see that guy come to uh, Nebraska, have a, a f- good familiar faces from the Big 12. From that aspect of things, I didn't see too much of, of the recruiting aspect of the defensive front on the D-tackle perspective uh, besides the, ta- the Texas Tech guy. And that's one guy i kind of seen resonating around this area because he's from the t- state of Texas. But I'm definitely going to be looking in on more of the intel with the defensive line front um going out to like get up there to lincoln got a, we get just a few minutes left here with oshan mathis if you're joining us here on husker chat live uh we'll have the archive here on youtube we'll also post it on the uh, podcast channel as well as on huskeronline.com so if you missed the beginning of this we'll have it up later on reminder hit the thumbs up give us a like get this video out to more husker fans I got one for you question, though. Uh, the, the Husker fans want to see you throw up the bones. Uh, I don't know if you're holding your – are you holding your phone or someone holding yeah, it for my you? Phone. I can definitely do that. Hold on. Let me set my phone somewhere. Hopefully it doesn't fall off the balcony. All right, let's see. There you go. There's there's the bones for the Husker it. fans. There y'all have it. Yes, there sir. you go. Uh, as we Give wrap it up here – <laughs> you know the history of the black shirts, right? Are you familiar with the kind of the, the history of the, the I've defense? Seen from, I've seen it from the fan side of things, and they they I've seen it pop up a lot. Um, I'm definitely still a little curious about it, and um, I've seen a lot of guys saying that I was going to be a black shirt. Definitely looking forward to seeing what that actually is about. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go in there and try to be a black shirt, like everyone says. <laughs> um. One final question here from Ryan. You guys play Oklahoma. How excited are you to play Oklahoma, uh, a team you're very familiar with? Yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited going back. And uh, I believe they're going to Lincoln. And uh, just having uh, a lot of familiar faces on that team is going to have me play a whole lot um, more aggressive because I, I, I have a bone to pick with those guys as much as anything. And um, it's going to be a war. And uh, – Definitely looking forward to it as if we were in the Big 12, going to the Big 10 and ha- hanging uh, with the other guys from the Big 10 and just having that type of impact on the game. I'm definitely looking forward to playing against OU for sure. Well, O'Shawn, this has been a lot of fun. Um, I think we're at 441 live viewers still right now. Oh, yeah. Um, and this has been a lot of fun, though, getting a chance to get a talk to you, get to know you. Um, and I know you'll be up in Lincoln in about three weeks. So, uh, yeah. you grad, you graduate. When's the graduation date again? It's on May 7th, Saturday. Looking forward to it. Well, congratulations on Thank getting you. your degree at TCU. That's a, a, a really, really proud academic institution. I'm sure you're looking forward to getting down here now. So thank you guys. Well, that really wraps it up here, uh, with Husker chat live. Uh, once again, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, uh, thank you for joining here, uh, and thanks again to Oshan Mathis for joining us here in his first interview since uh, making his decision to Nebraska. For HuskerOnline.com, I'm Sean Callahan.